Um, the time that we're in right now and what the Lord had spoke to me um, just where I'm at we have you know come from one place we've just moved to another um, you know I'm in a place where right now I'm having to believe God um, not only you know for provision for the house provision for the church provision for finances I mean um, we have to um, um, it's just being in a place that requires faith. Being in a place that requires faith. So, something had caught me, and Joe, Brother Joe, who had traveled around with uh, Shambach for a while, R.W. Shambach, and foreign and different countries and stuff like that, Joe has seen some amazing miracles, you know, that God has done. Um, and... Joe's always talking about, you know, the need of the fivefold ministry and the function of the fivefold ministry in the house of God and the importance of it, you know. And, you know, Joe and like everybody, man, we want to begin to see miracles. You know, we want to see the lame walk. And, and it was in this study that I ran across something that I had discussed with Joe before, Joe and Madge, and it's a passion that burns in Joe to see that manifest here, right here before our eyes, and why don't we see it? You know what I mean? We're always praying for it and all of these things, and I told, I told Joe, I said, you know, um, we have everything we need here, you know? We don't have to believe. If we get sick, we go run to the store, we get an aspirin. You know, you know if we need to be encouraged, we go eat, you know, a couple of wabas. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just the society in which we live in today, we really don't have to believe for anything. Um, so I want to address that and talk about um, faith and uh, to point out why we don't see the miracles. And one of the scriptures that God had given me as I was going through, and, and this is really um, to Joe, but to everybody, um, which I thought was really amazing. I even highlighted it. And um, in James chapter 2, verse 5, James is all about faith. It says, you know, uh, the poor of this world is rich in faith. It's the poor in this world that are rich in faith. Now number one, in order to receive a miracle or a healing, you have to have faith. Amen. Right? So it explains when Shambach and other ministers go overseas in countries that is stricken with poverty. Amen. They're poor, but they're rich in faith. And because of the richness of their faith, these people walk two and three miles. Amen. They'll walk all day to go to a camp meeting to sit with 50,000 people in the mud, in the rain, and then walk, you know, yeah, right. They're not worried about ace, ack, and men. Those people are going there for one reason, because they believe if they get there, they're going to receive something. And that's why these... Miracles are manifested, you know, in foreign countries where poor is stricken. It's because, you know, when they get hungry, they got to get up each and every day and believe that when they go to the dump, that they're going to find something to eat. Or when they, you know, whatever it is that they have to do, it requires faith. Amen. You know, it, it isn't like us you know, open a refrigerator, we get hungry. Come on. You know, we don't even know what it means to, you know, basic, you know, um, basic faith is in far, in far as that if God didn't send the rain, well, then there would be no crops. 
I mean, how many of us right now actually pray it rains so we can eat? No. We just go to Walmart or go to Dollar Tree or whatever, Dollar Store, whatever it is, Winn-Dixie, and when we're hungry, we go get something to eat. It doesn't require faith because, you know, we can see it. And if you can see something, well, you don't need faith for it, right? right. But I'm going to tell you something that the United States is fixing to see that. It's going to happen. It's going to require faith. Because let me tell you something. James talks about, you know, um, the testing of our faith. Worketh patience. We don't have any patience. Come on. You know, we're hungry, we go eat. That's right. There's no patience. I'm hungry, I call my wife. You know, I open the refrigerator, give me something, pop it in the microwave. But if you remember, I mean, and let faith um, have its perfect work. Right? Amen. So, the United States of America is so blessed that, you know, where's the faith? That's, right. That's why you don't see the miracles. In fact, probably 90%, I would say, 95% of the miracles that we see supposedly in church are better fake. Oh, I feel better now that you prayed on my back. They go out there and they're not really healed. They're, they not, they didn't really, you know, a true healing, Come on. a true healing can be manifested in a few ways. It can be instant or it can be, you know, ongoing. And they give the scripture with Jesus laying hands on the man that was blind. He didn't receive his sight. What do you see? I see he said, I see men as trees walking. You know, he laid his hands on his eyes and, you know, he was healed. He could see. There's a lot of excuses that we make why we don't see. But when you get down to the root of it, the reason we really don't see miracles today is because we truly don't believe. Come on. That's a fact. And let me tell you something. It's not, you know, well, he laid hands on me and I didn't get healed. Well, because you didn't have faith. Why look at the minister, right? It's actually, it says biblically, and Jesus saw their faith. Right. He's, so faith can be seen. That's right. right. And Jesus even said himself, he could do little, little miracles in his hometown because of their unbelief, which is lack of faith. That's same, right. it breaks down to the same thing. Amen. So listen, I'm even, you know, I'm no different than you guys. You know, but I'm going to tell you something. It burns so deeply in Joe because he's been there He's seen the miracles happen and he wants that manifested here in the body of Christ over here. And he's passionate about it because when people see that, man, lives are changed. One miracle, Joe says, done in a body. In this thing, one miracle could be done. If a limb grew out, you couldn't fit the people in this place. If a real, actual miracle, they say I saw legs grow out. You know, they say, you know, all kind of things. But I'm telling you, man, I would even say 99% of that is really, you know, it's caught up in hype. But I'll tell you, there are legit miracles. There are people that are, you know, that go to a hospital and they say, hey, you know, get your house in order, you're going to die. And that person doesn't want to die. And they've been emptied of all hope that of what the world can do, finally, now, God can do something. Now, God can do something. Yes, come on. Sorry, I gotta tell you this. Yeah. You're talking about miracles. This came to my mind. I don't want to disturb your train of thought. No, go ahead. Have to we talk about legitimate miracles. Uh, and Brother Shambach was a pastor of a church in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, one of his sisters came to him, a young woman, she said, My mother was shot by her husband, and a bullet lodged under her eye. 
and it's very critical. They don't want to operate on her, but she's in very much pain, and she's suffering day and night. She can't sleep, and it's hurting her, but they, they're afraid to operate on her. So you know, he prayed, he laid hands on her. I'm telling you, I'm getting chill bumps right now. He laid hands on her and prayed for her, and while he had his hand on her, the lead melted out the side of her eye, ran down her cheek, and ran in his hand. Oh, my God. Wow. My God. I mean, how, how, can, you, how can you doubt something like that? That's right. The lead ran down her cheek like a tear, the lead bullet, out the side of her, and ran wow. into his hand. Hallelujah. Give Jesus all of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know what? I believe it. I definitely, I believe it, you know. So, you know, it's where I'm at right now. Yeah. It's where I'm at. And um, so you always minister from any pastor, you know, usually, if they're a true man of God, will minister from where they're at. You know, and um, because it's real. I go through big things just like you guys do. And I know um, you know, I know it's God's timing for this message because um, even the what Charlene had uh, in the Bible study this morning talked about, I mean the first song that Jason sings is I Will Walk by Faith. Amen. You know, and it was the whole message is about faith. So that's what I want to talk to you about today. Yeah. Um, so Lord Father, you are amazing. Yes. You know, even through my brother in praise and worship, you said, he said, how many of you guys, you know, are going to finish the race? Father, I pray yeah. that every soul that hears this message, Lord, will finish the race. Yeah. It's not about who starts the race. Amen. It's about who finishes the race. And it doesn't matter what, it's not about the, the positioning of, when you come or pass through the finish line, it's just about finishing the race. Yeah. So, Father, help us, Lord. Yeah. You know, we say, Father, increase our faith. Wow. Do we really know what it means? Because the increasing of our faith, Lord, would actually begin to remove the, the things in our life away from us that we um, trust in. It was the reason, Father, that you brought Israel out of Egypt and brought them in the wilderness because you was wanting to build faith in them, Lord. But they kept wanting to go back. Lord, I don't want to look back. I don't want to look back at Egypt. I don't want to look back at Sodom, Lord, like um, Lot's wife. Father, there's nothing there. Lord, it's, uh, Lord, I want to trust and believe in you because, Father, it's going to take that kind of faith Lord, that whatever it is that we have in our hand, like the five loaves and the two fishes, that you can multiply it, Father. So, Lord, um, I ask that you would open the eyes, Father, in the hearts of those that are here and give them ears to hear. Father, I pray that they would be encouraged by your word, Lord. Me also, Lord, I need it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Let's look at it real quick. Let's see what faith is. Um, and what I did was, um, you know, I can take you straight to, you know, Hebrews 11, you know, and to show you how God confirms these things. Yesterday, I, I wrote the message down, and after I got finished yesterday morning, me and my son, and I, it was from Hebrews chapter 11, you know, all the, you know, men and women of faith, and... Um, I left, got in a truck with my son, went to the car show. I'm going through Kiln and driving, and I'm thinking about, you know, what I had, you know, what the Lord was showing me. I look up on a sign, big old billboard, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 16. I'm like, <laughs> now, if that isn't God, I don't know what is. The very chapter, the same, I just, I said, Zechariah, look, I just read that, you know. And uh, so anyway, you know, the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. But it's the evidence of things not seen. Because once you see something, it's no longer faith. Amen. Right? right? So faith requires you uh, to believe without seeing. So faith in the Hebrew is the word imam, uh, imun, E-M-U-N, in the Hebrew. 
It means faithful. It means to be trustworthy. So, and apply this to yourself. Are you faithful? Are you trustworthy in all things to, you know, your husband and your wife, to your word, to whether you fellowship, to whatever it is that you do, you know, you need to be faithful and trustworthy. Um, it's only mentioned two times in the Old Covenant. The other time, it's, uh, it's the Hebrew, it's from the Hebrew 530, and it's muna, which means to be steadfastness, to be steady. That means no matter what, no matter what you find yourself in, there ain't no going back. Amen. You have to have that mindset Amen. in Jesus Christ. Amen. The world is not an option for you anymore. Like, like Peter said, Lord, you know, in John 6, 6, 6, many left him. That's right. He said, unless you, eat my bre unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you can have no part in the kingdom. And it says, and many, many left him. And he looked at his disciples and Peter and said, will you also leave? He said, Lord, where are we going to go? Right. You have the words of eternal life. They realized what he was saying was spiritual and not physical. Right? right. So the attitude of when you come to Jesus Christ is that, hey, there ain't no going back. It took years for me to get there because I was up and I was down and I was up and I was down. I was blazing and then I was out, yeah. you know. But there came a time in my life when I told my mom, it was like I had that, that Paul moment, that encounter on the road of Damascus, and Jesus just stuck me, and I told my mom, there ain't no going back. There's no going back. And if you haven't experienced that, Come on. well then, you need to. You need to have a Jesus moment. You need to have an encounter. And then you're going to find out that those encounters don't come every day. They are spread out, sometimes years apart. You know what I'm saying? But it's God testing you in your faithfulness. Now, what are you going to do? Well, Lord, you know, where else am I going to go? So, I want to talk about, in the Greek, it's the word um, pistis, P-I-S, T-I-S, 4102 in the Greek. And it means the same thing, faithfulness. It means to believe, to trust, with the implication of action. So, and the very word that's connected to it in the Greek is 4, uh, 4411, which is protokolosa. And it means um, it's a place of honor or it's a chief room. Now think about this, it's a place of honor or a chief or uppermost room. Now that is a direct connection to when Jesus told the 500 to go away to you be in due with power from on high, not many days from now. That was 10 days later. 500 went, only 120 stayed and was filled. 380, their faith left them. Well, where is it at? How long is a couple of days? Guess what? They didn't keep the faith. Amen. They missed out. And because God, because they stayed and remained, God used them as chief apostles. They were lifted up, right? Amen. So if you remain faithful, you will be used by God. Amen. If you don't remain faithful, yeah. you know, you'll be used by the devil. Amen. That's just how it is. Number one, um, being uh, faith requires, number one, faith requires believing without seeing. It's the absence of sight. And I'm going to go through a list of these. I just wrote them down. The Lord was speaking to me. This is what he told me. Faith requires believing without seeing. That's the absence of sight. We talked about that. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Faith requires going against what seems normal. Amen. Right? Yeah. Number two, I mean number three, faith requires risk and warfare. Oh, yeah. It's risky to be a Christian. Yeah. Right? Amen. Faith requires the rejection of the things of the, that the world offers. 
faith requires believe in every word in the Bible as the inspired word of God and it's the absolute truth. That's what faith requires. Now, man, in order to do that, you have to read the word to see what's in there, right? Faith requires the inability to save oneself by works or any other method that flesh can produce. I got family members that say, I can be saved by my good works. There are many that are out there that believe they're going to be saved, you know, because of they're good people. And they're going to bust hell wide open. Faith requires that it's only by the blood of Jesus that we can get to the Father. Right? Amen. Um, faith requires, this is the only way that we could please God. Um, faith requires doing what God has called us to do according to His Word. So you have to do. Amen. You understand? If you remember, Jesus saw their faith. And in fact, in Acts 26, it says that Paul, perceiving and seeing their faith, So faith is something you could see. Faith requires us enduring or endurance, not giving up, for God has no pleasure in those who draw back. That's in Hebrews. That's what faith requires. It's not a suggestion of faith. It's a requirement. Faith requires us to die if need be for Jesus Christ. That's right. Faith requires not looking back to Egypt, to Sodom, or to your past life. Man, I wonder how, you know, my old boyfriend's doing. Let me see if I can pull his name up on Facebook. Man, I had a crush on him when I was, you know, wow, he's not married. Man, that's just the enemy. Because you don't remember the bad things. You won't never remember the bad things. Faith requires us to be fully persuaded in our journey here on earth. You have to be fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. Faith requires a good testimony. You want to be reputable? You want to you minister for God? Man... God's name is blasphemed all day long because want people say one thing and do another. Right. Stop. Faith requires a good testimony. Faith requires reading, yeah. praying, and fellowship with God. If you truly believe the word, and you really and you God says that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him then when you, you're really going to begin to, you know, I need to be with, I need to get to know Him. I need to read His Word, His, His message that He has left for me. This is your, you know, road map. This is the only way that you get to the Father. If you neglect what He's left for you to get to Him, it's on your own doing. Amen. Well, I just believe what my preacher said. What? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Even Paul said that the Bereans were more noble than the Thessalonians in that they searched the Scriptures to see if what Paul was saying was true or not. That means if I teach something to you, you, just, you don't need to take it as, you know, as truth before, unless you already know it, before you've researched it for yourself. There's only one way to the Father. That's through the Son. There's many religions that say there's other ways. Come on. That is untrue. Amen. Faith requires serving yes. and ministry to others. How do you serve Jesus? By serving others. That's right. <clears throat> 
But first, you need to start with those of your own house before you can move on. People get things out of order. And when you draw close to God, you know, then He will reveal where, you know, hey, I want you to pay a little bit more attention to your son. You understand? Amen. Faith requires us to be dedicated to where God has called us. Committed. That's what the Bible says. That's right. Commit yourselves one to another. Yeah. We're to be committed. Forsake not the gathering of the assembly as some do. That's right. Man, you, we need to be committed where God has called us to be committed. Right. What's more important? The things of the world? Come on. The things that are out there? No. It's to be faithful one to another. It says, you know, Paul said to do good to those especially of your own, of the own faith, your own household. Faith requires us to be able to hear God, and this is by His Word. I'm sorry to say, if you're not reading, you're not hearing. God speaks many ways, but the only way you can know it's God is by His Word to be able to distinguish. Paul said there are many voices that are out there. And you'll be led astray. Well, I just follow my heart. You can't follow your heart. The heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. Who can know it? Amen. Well, I'm not in love with them no more. Well, love is not something you fall into. Love is commitment. Yeah, that's right. Commitment. Yeah. Good or bad. It's hard. It is hard. <laughs> it is hard. <laughs> it is. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. You know, Paul's warned about those who get married. Right. He suggested don't. You get two minds, two different brains, come together thinking two different things. Oh, my Lord. Right. It's crazy sometimes. And we got our ways. And ain't no one will make you more mad than your spouse. That is a fact. Take it from me. I make my wife mad all the time. Amen. And her me. <laughs> but you know what? I don't think about leaving her. Because in order for me to leave her, I have to leave God. And I'm committed to Him. And He says, i got to be committed to her. Amen. And you just don't throw that away ever so lightly. Because you might be disregarded yourself. Come on. Because all you're seeking to do is fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's right. When it's a learning experience. There's no more covenants, no more commitments in the world. You know, pay $500 and get a divorce online now. Yeah. Irreconcilable differences. I'm not in love with him no more. Man, that's the world. That's not God. For the hardness of your hearts, God told Moses to give you a bill of divorcement, but this, and how, this is, wasn't how it was in the beginning. Man, I counsel against divorce. Never will stand for it. Ever, never, Amen. never will. Amen. It's a serious thing. And then I will never counsel you to divorce, even if I think you need to be divorced, because I would not want to persuade you to do anything. That is something between you and God. You never counsel anyone according to, you know, who they should marry and who they should divorce, nor their money. <laughs> That's things you learn. Um, it says faith requires, um, faith, uh, requires us to esteem others higher than ourselves. Faith requires a new birth, a new life, a new walk, a new family. Unless you forsake mother, brother, sister, you're not worthy. Amen. Who's more important to you? Those that you're going to live with now or those that you're going to live with eternally? Come on. It's a hard walk. And when you start making a stand for Jesus Christ, you'll see the separation. Guarantee it. 
So choose you this day whom you will serve. Either you will serve family or you will serve God. Amen. Faith requires us to be fruitful and multiply and make disciples. Amen. Yeah. Wow. You know what I said? We ain't putting a sign up at this church any longer. No matter wherever we go, we're not doing it. I'm not putting a sign out in the front no more. It's done. It's up to us to invite people to come. Come on. Amen. The only sign there is, is you. Right. Amen. And if it ain't written in your heart, and you're not passionate about where you go and passionate about Jesus Christ, well then, don't bring them. Because... I mean, you're not a sign. Come on. Realize that. You're a lighter on a hill. Yeah. Your life is to be on display. Yeah. And, you know, people should see it, man, and, and want to have what it is that you got. That's right. Man, come and see. I'll show you where I fellowship. Yeah. You're more than welcome, you know. And one thing good about this fellowship, you guys don't have to only fellowship here. This is Saturday. You can go to any other church that's out there, any other building, any other gathering, and I won't ever think anything. You don't belong to me. You belong to Jesus Christ. Amen. And he's leading you and guiding you. That's right. I encourage you to meet other Christians, to fellowship with them, to get to know them, to share with them what it is that you got and receive from them what it is that they have. Also, um, faith requires all of you, not part of you. Faith requires all of you, not part of you. You realize that? You can't be half-hearted. You can't straddle the fence. You can't live in the world and partake of the things of God. There's too many Christians that do that, and that's why God is mocked all day. Right? They watch your life. Guess what? By watching your life, they see your faith. Faith requires us to uh, study, to show ourselves approved unto God, not unto man. I don't want to know what you know. Get up here and people just want to share what it is. You get with people and they want to give you everything they know. You know, it's, uh, and that's good if it's the right time. Amen. But there are some people that want to give you everything they know and don't listen. Right. I know a few people like that. When I talk to them, I'm on the phone with them. I never can share with them. All they want to do is bleed on me. I've learned to listen. You have to be able to listen, too. Um, faith requires us to lay down our life and pick up the life of Christ. Do you realize that? Amen. And the life that you live in now is not your life. It's Amen. Jesus Christ's life. You picking up where he left off. And guess what? He didn't come to do his will. Wow. You come to do the Father's will. Amen. So you're doing the Father's will. Lay your life down. Yeah. Faith requires us to suffer affliction. Are you serious? Yeah. Are you serious? Faith, uh, rather, rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin. And sin is pleasurable. Yeah. Everybody knows that here. Yeah. Sin is very pleasurable. But we won't dwell on that. We've all had enough. And whatever monster you feed, that's the monster that's going to reveal itself. Amen. Uh, faith requires not fearing what man can do to you, do to your flesh, but what God can do to your eternal life. Amen. Jesus said that. Faith requires that. And until you found that, you know, faith requires us to believe that This can, the on, faith requires us that the only way that this can be done is by His Holy Spirit. Amen. You can't do it without Him. Amen. Faith requires us, the last one I have, number 30, faith requires us to get back up when we fall. Amen. Requires us. And then on the other side, I wrote, wrote some scriptures down and I'm going to end with these. It's 14 more. Number one, 
Faith can be seen. That's Matthew chapter 9, verse 2. It says, and in Acts chapter 14, verse 9, I'm sorry, I said 26 before, it's Acts 14, 9. It says, uh, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 2, and Jesus, seeing their faith, right? Yeah. And in Acts 14, 9, it says, and perceiving that they had faith to be healed. How many people do we want to lay hands on and see him healed? Well, the problem is they don't have faith to be healed. It's you wanting to see a miracle. Test the motive. I want to see a miracle. I want to see a miracle. I want to see a miracle. Do you, can you see the faith in an individual? What is faith? How can I see faith? A crippled man at the back end of a stadium crawling by his hands to get to the front. That's faith. And seeing faith. Hold on a second. Get out the way. It ain't got nothing to do with me. But according to your faith. That man was crawling down the aisle. Let it be done unto you. That's right. That's right. Faith can make you whole. Matthew chapter 9. What makes you whole? Faith does. If you have no faith, you're not going to be made whole. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why you're not seeing miracles. No faith. The Bible says to each man's given the measure of faith. And that measure that each man is given, it's not to each man's given a measure. Wrong. To each, me to each man is given the measure. That measure of faith that's given to each man is the measure to believe. Right. Now, faith can be grown. Yeah. Exercising. Exercising the faith, it can be grown. Right? Yeah. So everybody's got the measure of faith to believe. Thank you, Jesus. Because, yeah. man, I know that I know that I'm saved. I know it. The Bible says I can be sure of it. But I'm not sure if I lay hands on this individual and I pray for him, he's going to be healed. Yeah. I don't know where his faith is, and I'm going to tell you really, point blank, I know God can do it, but my faith really <laughs> ain't that strong. But now, Joe, if you see it happen, oh my God. Amen. It's like you want it. But I'll tell you another thing. There was given me the gift of faith one time in my life. I can't explain it. But it was when my son was born and they said he was going to die. Instantly. Instantly. Nothing I did. Nothing. It was like, my son's not going to die doctor just looked at me. I'm looking at him laying down. They got tubes in him. He's, he don't have developed lungs. They called me out of the operating room. The doctor come and got me out. Brought me in a room and said, listen, your son's lungs are undeveloped. He's not going to make it. He's not going to make it. Two doctors. I just knew that I knew that I knew. No. I know he was going to make I said, give me your hands. The two doctors. I was in the same room with my wife. They just take the baby out here and put him right there. And I just started praying right there. And, and praying, it was like, it was like, I didn't have to make a long prayer. I didn't have to, it was like, Lord, I know he's going to be healed. Thank you, Father. I knew it. Amen. I can't even explain, it was something that was given to me. It wasn't pray a good prayer for me. Pray a long prayer for me. Man, keep the prayer, those kind of prayers, because I'm telling you, uh, the truth, you don't even have, you could walk up to somebody and like, and you, it's just like, I can't even explain it. You just know it. Yeah. Just know it. Yeah. And man, it was like, I knew that anything that I asked God, right there, I knew he was going to do it. Amen. <coughs> We haven't grabbed the whole of that yet. 
Because any man, the Bible says, that acts as anything of God. You know, let that man ask in faith. Man, pin that one down. Not wavering. Well, I wonder if he's going to do it or not. No, no. Faith says it's going to be done. True faith. Amen. It's wow. You know, um, faith can make you whole. One receives, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 29, one receives according to their faith. Faith is tied into a lot of this, huh? Yeah. Wow, it's our whole walk. Um, also, it says, if you had the faith of a mustard seed, in Matthew chapter 17, 20 and 21, you could move a mountain. Move a mountain. And then he says it again. He says, if you had the faith of a mustard seed, you could tell this tree to be plucked up and thrown into the sea, and it would be done. If we just contained a mustard seed of faith. Amen. Wow. Amen. I wish there was some place I can pull up and just, you know, put the gas pump in and fill up on faith. But let me tell you something how faith comes. Read James. Comes through testing. Amen. Oh, Lord, increase our faith. You lost your job. Oh, Lord, please give me a job. Please. Oh, well, I want my job. Don't worry about faith. Give me my job back. Amen. That's how faith comes, man. It's the absence of everything you got. It's the emptying of everything you got. To be totally dependent and trusted on God for everything. One day at a time. Our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name, right? Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Amen. One day at a time. That's where the song came from. Amen. We don't live like that, but it's coming. And you know what's coming with it? Amazing faith. We're going to see things that is so wow. But first, we've got to be emptied of everything that we have. Man, you think about that. That's scary. It's going to require us to believe. Faith saves you, Luke 7, verse 50. The opposite of faith is to be fearful. Mark chapter 4, verse 40. The opposite of faith is to be fearful. Mark chapter 4, verse 40. Why are you so fearful? Have you not any faith? Right? Perfect love casts out fear. Isn't it funny? That faith, hope, and love are all knit together as one. The opposite, love, perfect love casts out fear. We have hope in the resurrection. Amen. And faith that he's faithful to complete what he's begun. Right. right? He's going to bring us to the end. Yeah. Faith is what saves you. Luke chapter 7 verse 50. It's hard for man because man believes he has to do. Well, if you truly believe, you will produce. Number eight, faith will be hard to find when the Lord returns. Luke 18, verse 8. Wow. Faith. Jesus said, will I find faith when I come? A lot of people are going to quit the race. How do I know that? Because the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians that there'll be a great falling away from the faith. Wow. 
Number 11. I mean, number 10. We are sanctified by faith in Christ. Acts chapter 2. I mean, Acts chapter 26, verse 18. We're sanctified by faith. Faith came way before the law. Noah, right? He believed God, moved with fear, built an ark to the saving of his house. Right? Abraham believed God, left Ur of the Chaldeans. Right? Sarah believed God, had faith, get, was given strength to conceive seed. What does that mean? To give birth at 92 years old or 90 years old. A woman 90 years old giving birth will die. Amen. In fact, Paul talks about that. That because women, if they believe in Christ, that they'd be spared in childbirth. Wow. But when the glory departs, you die. Sound familiar in the scripture? Remember, somebody died giving birth to Benjamin, right? Amen. Some things. Um, actually, I'm sorry. It wasn't Rachel. It was uh, Hophni and Finfaz. It was, um, um, I think it was Finfaz's wife. The glory had departed. Yeah. And um, when she was given birth, she died. Yeah. That means the spirit left. But if you have the spirit, you can go through childbirth, right? What is the women going to do, you know, when you can't go to the hospital and there's complications? Come on. How many people, how many children and women are going to be dying when, you know, everything you can't go to the hospital to have? Is there any midwives in here? Come on. No. No, there isn't. But you know what? If you're in the faith, well then, what will happen would happen in Egypt, right? right. When Pharaoh told the... Uh, the the uh, the women who are who do you, the the, uh, midwives. the midwives when they're given birth kill the babies the midwives came to Pharaoh kill the, males. kill the males that's right the midwives came they're not like the Egyptian women the Jewish women spit them out they fast they come out <laughs> that's because the blessing of the Lord was on them. It's going to require faith to believe in God to go through things like that. That's why the Bible says, Woe unto them that give suck in that day. That's right. Wow. And the Bible says, The poor of this world is rich in faith. That's why they receive the healings. We are to earnestly to contend for the faith that was delivered unto us. Jude 1 verse 3. You realize that? You are to contend for your salvation. Okay. Don't give it away. Allow the enemy to take it. Number 13. Faith can be built up by prayer in the Holy Spirit. Jude 120. Building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And my last one. I want you to realize this. Revelation chapter 2, verse 13. You can. Talking, he's talking to the church. You can deny the faith once delivered and lose your eternal inheritance. That means your life. That's right. The Bible says though though Esau though Esau sought it with tears he was delivered something but gave it away. He gave away his eternal inheritance. What is our eternal inheritance? Heaven. Everlasting life. And that gift that has been given to you and me is the most precious gift of all. Amen. And you are to contend for that thing, to hold on to it, to not let it go, not give it away, not be sucked into the world. Because if you do... You've let it go. And you can die without it. Amen. Father, you are good, Lord. Lord, I pray. Lord, and I'm even scared to ask that, Father, that you would increase our faith, Lord.
Lord, I know you're faithful. And that means that we have to totally rely on you for everything, Father. And Lord, you know the position that I'm in, Father. But I trust you, Lord. Yeah. And I love you, Father. And I'm contending for the faith all the way to the end, till I cross the finish line. Like Paul said, I fought the good fight, I finished the course. And now the only thing that's laid up for us, for me, Paul said, is eternal life. Father, I pray that by your Holy Spirit, Lord, you would strengthen everyone that's here today, Lord. Lord, to earnestly contend for the faith, Lord. To trust you, Lord, with our whole heart. Lord, especially as we see these times drawing near, Lord. Don't let us be ones that draw back unto perdition, Father, that you're not pleased with, Lord. But Lord, I pray, just as you prayed for Peter, even faith can be prayed for. Lord, you told Peter, I pray that your faith wouldn't fail. Father, I pray, Lord, that our faith won't fail you. I ask it in Jesus' name, through your Son, by your Son, to our high priest, who's ever making intercession for us, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you called us, Lord. It was nothing we did. It was just your love just lavished on us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen.